What do you mean by augmented reality? What are you doing there? So the, the new app allows you to film an athlete. And by filming them with your phone, uh, initially what we're going to be doing is that it, it'll measure the pool. It measures the 15-meter mark. It measures the, um, the distance from the flags to the wall. And it gives, you, uh, it gives you this data. Now, initially, we're going to be launching that you have to interact with the screen. So every time when the swimmer starts, you press start. It's like a stopwatch. When they take a stroke, you press the stroke button. And uh, when they turn, you hit the turn button. Now, the augmented reality goes out and it says, okay, here's the 15-meter mark. Here's the, the flags. Where was their breakout? And it starts to give you all this data from stroke break, stroke length, this uh, uh, breakout point, breakout distance, turn time. Uh, swim velocity gives you all the splits and then it gives you a score so the score is going to be a combination of all of that data and that score then goes out to the website and says these are probably the most appropriate videos for you to be watching based on your score so if we have a 10 year old that goes 135 and 100 yard freestyle we're not mm. showing them bruno Okay, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of things they need to learn before they start watching Bruno. But everybody wants to watch Bruno because I mean he's he's great to watch. So, you know, so it's it's technology that imagine a parent sitting in the stands. There are parents at every heat at every, of every meet filming their kids. Where does that video go? It, it maybe the kid watches it later. But now that can be uh, that can be used as performance data to the point that a coach sits on deck, not sits, stands, cheers, yells, uh, encourages, teaches. But then when they get to the office after the meet, all of the data is there, all of the data of those people that participated in the system. Uh, so all of the data that mom and dad are getting, it's not just going to go go away anymore. Well, now that coach has race stroke rates on their athletes so that they can take a tempo trainer or they can start to develop more things in practice that says, we're going to train the way you race. We're going to actually not guess as much, but we're going to have this data that then says, this is how we need to build these strokes, or this is how we can improve on what you do. So the way I'm picturing this is, like you said, the parent will be in the stand, they'll upload the video to the app, and then it'll get filed somewhere, and then the coach can then access that video. Is that correct? Well, it's it's even simpler than that. You actually film in the app. We've got little, okay. little marks that say, keep your swimmer in this frame. Because okay. if you've ever watched a parent film a kid, if you've ever gotten video, the yeah. kid is always in the back third <laughs> of the screen because the parent's trying to push him along to make him go faster. <laughs> And so we say, you know, keep them in the middle, and then uh, that that data can be added in the app right there. Now, what we've really tried to do is make it seamless. So once the relationship between the coach and the swimmer has been established, okay, we're very big on data protection, data privacy, uh, especially we're uh, this is all the stuff we have to deal with: COPA, MAP, GDRP, Safe Sport and any other laws that are gonna come out. So there's new laws for privacy and data privacy in California that we have to deal with. And so these relationships have to be set so that once a parent films that video, the coach automatically gets it. So the coach doesn't have to request it. The parent doesn't have to send it. All, we have to make everything as automated as possible. Mm. Every time you have somebody click a button or a require a button gets pressed, it, it breaks the process a little bit. Right. So uh, again, once that, that uh, relationship has been set to the point that if a coach is at practice, pulls out their phone, films the swimmer in the app, adds some data or just uses the swimmer, that video is automatically shared back to the swimmer. So it's an open, a very open relationship. If the swimmer is under 18, the parents are in included in all the messaging, that's MAP. Um, so we have to look at a lot of laws and everything that we can do to protect kids, mm. which also then protects uh, coaches. So coaches, um, you know, have a lot of rules that they have to follow. And so we've tried to build a system or we have built a system. We haven't tried because we get bills from our privacy attorney, making sure we're doing everything right. Um, so we've built a system that will protect everybody, but still leave a path towards sharing and and right. uh, a very simple path to sharing right uh, what i was just thinking what do you what happens when a swimmer changes coaches 
in terms of the, the, the shared information? So the swimmer owns all the data. The swimmer owns all the content. Okay? okay. So if that swimmer leaves that group, that training group that the coach has created and goes to another training group, all of that goes with them. Okay. Got it. Got it. Nice. <coughs> I like it. So this yeah. is all going to be under the Go Swim banner, right? So if you're already a member of Go Swim next week or two weeks, or if you have the app, you're just going to open it up and it's all going to be different. It's the same price that we've charged for the last, uh, the subscription site is 11 years old. And so when I show this to coaches, they, the first thing they say is how much is this going to cost? And yeah. I said, are you a subscriber? And they say, you know, some say yes, some say no. They say, if it's yes, nothing changes. This is wow. what we have to do from a business standpoint to, to meet our mission. And our mission is to um, help people on their path to becoming better swimmers. 